It's been recorded for you. Um, yep. yep. Okay. So, so when, when you're given two different shapes, you can equate the volumes. The volume will remain the same. You're just changing that volume into a different shape. Any problems of question five? Or, or anything before that. that. From, From the work that you guys did, you're doing really well. Um, there's still a couple of you who are not starting it off, not writing down your equation. I, I don't know why you're skipping these steps, guys. You're like, you cannot skip steps. Whatever maths you think is the maths that you should be putting on the paper as you go. No mental maths. Write it down. It has to be on the paper. They expect to see it. And, and that, that only gets more and more obvious as you go through your like maths through school and through university. Have, have to write everything down. All right. All right. So, so now we're looking at immersion problems. So now we're placing an object into the water. So the volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the submerged object. So you have seen that in science before. You've already done that in science. Uh, it's called Archimedes' Principle. Do you guys remember that? So it just means that if you place an object in the water, the water will rise up. So the amount of water that's displaced is the same as the volume of your object. So that's really important. Okay. You guys can take that down. The volume of water displaced and the volume of the submerged object, well, they're going to be the same. Okay, okay let's try an example question. Now, again, I'm going to be doing these questions with you, but if you feel confident to do them on your own, you know what to do. We are doing questions 10, 11, 12, 13, and your challenge is question 15. So if you want to do them a bit quicker than me, um, feel free to just work on them now. All right, All right starting with question, an example question. A cylindrical tank of radius 12 centimeters is partly filled with water. A sphere of radius 6 centimeters is immersed in the water. What will the height of the water rise be? So we're saying that when your sphere is dropped in your water, the water level will rise. Okay, so here's your sphere, and we've got water in it. I take my sphere and I place it in the cylinder, and the water level rises. And you want to find this H, you, you want to find how much that water has risen by. Well, well what do we know? You, you write down what you know first. You, you know, know that the volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the displaced water. So your volume of your sphere is equal to your volume of your displaced water. Work out what your volume of your sphere is. So your volume of your sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. The radius of your sphere is 6 centimeters. Your volume is 4 over 3 pi times 6 cubed. So our volume of our sphere is this, 288 pi centimeters cubed. We know that the volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the displaced water. Therefore, we state that the volume of your displaced water is equal to 288 pi. So write down what you know, and then substitute in your formula. So what's your formula for this volume of your cylinder? See, it's a cylindrical shape. So that's, so that's your cylindrical shape here. So, so this cylinder, that blue cylinder, is equal to 288 pi. 
pi r squared h is equal to 288 pi. So we want to find h the height. Substitute in the dimensions that you know. So we know that the radius of your time is 12 centimeters. So substituting in for r or radius, we get canceling out your pi's. 12 squared times h equals 288. We now, we now want to solve for h. h. So, so we multiply it out. 12 squared gives us 144 times h equals 288. To solve for h, we divide both sides by 144. So h is equal to 288 divided by 144, which is 2 centimeters. So in these questions, we start off by stating the volume of your object immersed is equal to the volume of your water displaced. We solve for the volume of your shape, Substitute in your formula and, and solve for your unknown dimension. Okay. okay. Any, Any questions? questions? Okay. okay, can you please take down this example and let me know when you have a time? Guys, you actually have this example in your books anyway, so if you don't want to take a dime, that's okay. Uh, if you've started taking a dime, finish it, of course. But um, you can see it in your books as well. It's on page 326. Okay, are we ready to move on? Do we have any questions about this? Let me know, guys, are we happy to move on or not? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, the last type of questions that you'll be looking at. These are called flow problems. So they're problems to do with a liquid flowing through a cylindrical pipe. All right, in these types of questions, the flow speed through the pipe equals the length or the height of the column of water in that pipe for a particular time period. I mean, let's say we're told that the water flows at a rate of 10 centimeters per second through a cylinder. Try and think of it as a snapshot. If I look at one second, okay, so in one second, this is the amount of water I have. In one second, I have a cylinder that's 10 centimeters long, full of water. So the height 
all of the volume of water in the pipe is equal to the flow speed. So here, if the water is flowing at 10 centimeters per second, it means that in one second, you have a cylinder that's 10 centimeters long full of water. In one second, you have one cylinder that's 10 centimeters long full of water. That's what the flow speed tells you. Okay, so that's what your flow speed means. The flow speed will tell you how much water, what's the length of your column for that time period, for one second. Okay, let's look at a question. So again, if your flow speed is 12 centimeters per second in the cylindrical pipe, it means every second your water travels a distance of 12 centimeters. In one second, you have a cylinder 12 centimeters long full of water. That's what you need to think about. Whatever your speed is, that's the length of your column. Okay, this is question 10, guys. Okay, so we're going to do question 10. It's the first one we're going to do. Water is flowing through a cylindrical pipe at a speed of 35 centimeters per second. The radius of your pipe is 5 centimeters. The water is poured into a cubic tank of side 10 centimeters. Find the rise in the depth of the water in the tank in five minutes. So this question is really similar to question 10. So slightly different, but very similar. Okay, so you want the rise in the depth of water. So this is what you have. In one second, you have a cylinder that's 35 centimeters in height. Full of water. And you have, for five minutes, you have this water going into a cubic tank. So the first thing we need to do is find how much water is flowing into the tank every second. So find the amount of water, the volume of water flowing into the tank in a second. And then we can find the volume for five minutes. We can multiply that value to find the volume for five minutes. So this is what we have. And this is what we need to find. You are going to find the volume of water that flows into the tank in one second. To find the volume of water that's flowing into the tank in one second, we know that every second we have the volume of this cylinder of length 35 centimeters. So the volume of water per second is equal to the volume of your cylinder that has a length of 35 centimeters. So to find your volume of water per second, it's pi r squared h, where r is the radius of your cylinder, your pipe, and, and H, H is, is your height, height of the column of water. So the, so the volume, volume of water per second is 22 over 7 times 5 squared times 35. So the volume of water per second is 2,750. We want the volume of water in five minutes. 
They say we want the volume of water in the tank in five minutes. So this is the volume of water per second. We want the volume in five minutes. So first off, how many seconds are there in five minutes? We multiply our number of minutes by 60 to find the number of seconds. So we want the amount of water in 300 seconds. So the volume of water in 300 seconds is the volume in one second times 300. So we have a volume of water in a cube of 825,000 centimeters cubed. We want the depth of the water. So it's going into a cubic tank. So it's going into a cubic tank. So what's the volume of a cube? This is what we're looking for here. So, so we, we want, want the height of this. We want, we want how much water is here. You want, we want that height. We, we know, know the length, length and the breadth of, of your cubic container. container. We, we want, want to find the height. height. So, so we, we state, state that, that your length times width times height, times height equals your volume. This means 100 times 100 times x equals your volume. And then, and then we solve for x. So 100 times 100 gives us 10,000. And then we want to find our value of x, so we divide by that. So we have x is equal to 82.5 centimeters cubed. Okay, okay, so that's pretty much the hardest question we could find. So that kind of includes everything. Let's try a few more. So the hardest part here is always with these types of flow questions. Try and find the amount of water every second. And then either multiply or divide. So in this case, you're finding the amount of water in five minutes. So multiply the amount of water per second by the number of seconds in five minutes. Okay, okay will we try another one? All right, All right, let's, let's try, try question 10 now. Again, Again, the example that we have here is the example that's in your book on page 325. Any, Any questions? I know, I know these ones are tricky. Okay, okay, are we ready to move on? Let me, Let me know, guys, when you're ready to move on. Okay, thanks, Chloe. Okay, okay so, so if you don't have this time, that's okay. You can still find it on page 325. Let's, Let's try another type of question. Okay, okay so, so I'm going to do question 12. 
So let's skip question 10. Question 10 is quite similar to what I just did. So we're moving on to question 12. So water is kept cool in a cylindrical container of diameter 28 centimeters and height 30 centimeters. The water is poured into a small cylindrical cup, each of diameter 6 centimeters and height 7 centimeters. When the cooler is full, how many cupfuls of water does it contain? Okay, so we want to see how many of these little cups go into that big cylinder container. So the first thing we're going to do is find the volume of your large cylinder. So we're going to find the volume of our large cylinder first. Let's see how much water in total we have. To find the volume of your large cylinder, the first thing we do is write down our formula. Pi r squared h equals the volume of your cylinder. Where or the, the radius of your large cil cylinder is half of your diameter. So, so 28 divided by 2 gives me a radius of 14 centimeters. This means the volume of your large cylinder is pi times 14 squared times 30. So the volume of our cylinder is 5,885. So our big cylinder has a volume of 5,885. We need to see how many small cups fit into this. So we need to see how, what's the capacity of your small cylinder? What's the capacity of your cup? So we need to find the volume of the small cylinder now. Again, write down your formula. Pi r squared h equals your volume of your cylinder. In this case, we're told that the diameter of your small cylinder is 6 centimeters. So if the diameter is 6 centimeters, the radius is half of that value. So the radius is 3 centimeters. That gives us pi times 3 squared times 7 equals the volume of your cylinder. So 63 pi centimeters cubed equals the volume of your small cylinder. And we want to see how many times, so how many times does this volume go into this volume? How many cups fit in that? So the volume of your large cylinder divided by the volume of your small cylinder equals the number of cups. That gives us 5,880 pi divided by 63 pi equals your number of cupfuls. And putting that in your calculator, you get 93.3 cupfuls. Or you can write that if you want to. Okay, so we find the volume of both and divide them into each other. And that's question 12. So we've done question 10. We've done question 12. Let's look at question 13. Okay, I'm going to leave that on the board for a minute and we're going to do question 13 next. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know when you're ready to try question 13. Hey guys, let me know when you're ready to move on. 
to question 13. And if you're ready, you can start reading through question 13. Okay, let me know when you're ready to do question 13. You can start it if you are have this down, and if you're happy with question 12, you can start question 13. It's exactly the same, or it's very, very, it's exactly the same as the example we just did um, on the flow questions, just with slightly different values. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, great. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Okay, question 13. So we're going to get it started. You can have it, you should have it in your assignment open. So we're told that water flows through a cylindrical pipe at a rate. So we're told that our rate is 10 centimeters per second. We're told that the diameter of your pipe, so we have a pipe of diameter, seven centimeters. We're told that the water is poured into a rectangular tank of length 55 centimeters and width 20 centimeters. And we're asked to find what is the depth of water after one minute. Okay, so. You're given this. Uh, let's just draw. Okay, so you are pouring water into um, this cylinder. So here's my water. That's the red water. So I'm pouring water from the cylinder into this tank. Okay, so I want to see what's the depth, what's the depth of my tank when I poured water in for one minute. So the first thing you need to do is find how much water, what's the volume of water going into the tank in a second? So find the volume of water. Pour it in per second. In one second. So we need to find the volume of water that's going in in one second and then multiply it by 60 because we want the amount of water that's going in in 60 seconds, in one minute. So the first thing we need to do is find the volume of water in one second. The volume of water in one second. So in one second, if you have a flow rate of 10 centimeters per second, in one second, we have a cylinder that's 10 centimeters long, full of water. So the volume of water in one second is equal to pi r squared h, the volume of your cylinder that has a length of 10 centimeters. So to find the volume of water in one second, it's pi 
times my radius off my cylinder, 3.5. So if my diameter is seven, my radius is 3.5. Times the height, which is the column length, 10 centimeters. Okay, so your column length is always going to be that speed value. This gives us 3.5 squared times 10. So we have a volume of 22.5 pi centimeters cubed in one second. So this is the amount of water that's flowing in in one second. We want to find the volume of water in one minute. Well, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we're looking for the volume of water in 60 seconds. So if we have the volume in one second, to find the volume in 60 seconds, we times our volume by 60. So the volume of water in 60 seconds is equal to 7,350 pi. Centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's how much water is going into your tank. So we have this red area here in your tank. That volume, that volume is equal to 7,350 pi centimeters cubed. Now we want to find an unknown dimension. We want to find the height of your container. So we know that our container, our volume, of our container is equal to 7,350 pi. So guys, I'm gonna finish this one off, but I know it is 10 to four now. So if you think you can do this one on your own, you feel free to um, log off now. And if you wanna stay on and finish it with me, um, please feel free to. So I'm just gonna finish this question off. So our volume is equal to 7,350 pi. Nice, substitute in your equation for the volume of your tank. So that's length times breadth times height equals 7,350 pi. We're looking for our height. We know that our length is 55 and our breadth is 20. We're told that in the question. So solve now for H. So this gives me, uh, sorry guys. Oh, sorry guys, <laughs> that just divided out me. So you guys can finish that one off on your own. Um, it just disappeared. Sorry guys, it just canceled out. Um, but I will put this recording up and you should be able to finish that height so you're just dividing your value of 1,100 by the volume that you had. So by your volume. So it was 1,000, oh, 1,100, 1,100 times your height equals the volume value. So your height is equal to your volume divided by 1,100 and then you find your depth. Okay guys, so you are now finishing off question 13. So we should be able to do question 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 15 is the challenge. Okay, best of luck. That's good study for your test tomorrow. Thanks so much guys, well done. Well done guys. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, well done. Excellent work today, guys. Well done.